Simon, congratulations. That feels like a massive win today. Does it feel like that to you? Uh, I think the nature of the game makes it a massive win. Yeah. Um, you know, it was um, obviously not the start we wanted, but um, yeah, proud of the players today. You yeah. know, and it was um, it was a real test of character the way we go goal down, um, and I thought the way we dealt with it, the way we stuck to the task, we dug in um, and we got back in front. And um, you know, so I think of course I'm delighted. Um, and, uh, and most important one, I'm just pleased for the players. Yeah. You know, I'm pleased for the players that they get to walk off the pitch today, pad his goal. Because, you know, you're quite right, the supporters see the 90 minutes in the stadium. We know we've not been the best version of ourselves. And we know we haven't been able to transfer all the hard work that goes in daily into some of the displays. Mm. Some of the displays. Um, and, uh, you know, it was nice. I was, I was really, really pleased for the players today. And, and of course, pleased for the supporters at the end that they get to enjoy that. He did see a turnaround in the second half. Mark McGee, I watched him at half time. He looked to be fuming at the end of the first half. But then, second half, what on earth did you say at half time? Mm, yeah, I'm going to challenge that a bit. I'm going to push right. that back. Um, I felt, I didn't, I didn't think, you know, we have a couple of moments, but you're not going to contain every aspect of a, a promotion challenger. And I don't want to speak about Wrexham's finances, it's none of my business. But the players they have on the pitch are an experienced, strong set of players for the level. So we're not going to contain every element. First goal we concede is preventable, but I think the psychology of it is very damaging as well potentially. Yeah. So we stood up to that, um, and I said to the players at half time, very calmly, stick to the task, stick to what we're doing. Fans will be with you. We're with you on the side. Be cool. Defend well. You'll get a moment to get back in the game. You might feel like it was different, or you know, or, but it wasn't. You know, there was for me, it was utterly part of the game plan that we would win the game in the second half today. Um, and we managed to get the two goals in the second half, so you know, pleased with that. Obviously, I speak to the players privately, and I know it's been a difficult few weeks. The players what are they're a hundred percent behind you. When I speak to them, they are a hundred percent behind you. And I think nobody typified that more today than the man of the match, Ben Whitfield. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about his role today. Yeah, um, I mean, look, that, that's nice. And most important, one hundred percent behind them. Um, I thought, you know, Whit's had his energy today, and it's, you know. He's, he's, a, he's adjusting to a new environment, a new club, and sometimes that's not straightforward. Yeah. I've experienced that as a player. You go into a new club, new environment, takes a bit of time to settle. You know, we've been trying. To, look, we've been hampered with a lot of injuries, um, and we've been trying to find a way. We've been trying to find a way, and it's been tough. You know, and, and part of that trying to find a way at times has been asking people like Wits, at times like Paddy, to do things that they're not necessarily used to doing. Um, and so with that, you know. I think Wits today was, a, was in more of a natural role for him and we saw his energy, we saw his endeavour, we saw his work rate and, and he's just, you know, it was, a, it was a great second half for him, wasn't it? And delighted for him. Another big call today was to change your goalkeeper and Ethan Ross obviously made a couple of really significant saves in that first half to, to stop Paul Mullins scoring more than the one that he got. Yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit about the, the thought process and the decision making. It yeah. must have been a tough one for you. Yeah, look, it's always tough when you're, part of your job as a manager is to make decisions. You know, you have to make decisions, you have to manage your decisions, you have to, you know, whether you're top of the league, five points clear, or you're, you're struggling for a bit of form, you're always problem solving, you're always dealing with issues. And and um, and, what, and we just felt that it was time for a little bit of a freshen up, a bit of change. Um, you know, Ben with his 250 games at the club, a promotion, an unbelievable character, and no, none more typified today by his reaction. Yeah. And his first words to me when we chat on Friday, I just want the team to win. Um, and obviously the goalkeepers union and it's, it's not a case that anything was drastically wrong um, I view that area of the pitch probably no different to how I view the outfield ones that there's healthy competition um, we've got good players here and we'll use them um, and, and I'm sure at some point we'll need to draw upon Ben's quality and experience again so you know, I didn't want to make a drama out of it I just wanted to treat a, a really good professional who's been a wonderful servant for the club and will continue to be um, really well, and, and, and his reaction today—he's part of that performance today. You know what typifies us that there's no, there's no, obviously there's disappointment, but his reaction is I just want the team to do well. So even today, the guys that aren't involved—they're part of that win today, and that, that really shines a light on that part of it through Ben. I think he was the first person to hug you at the final whistle, and then Mark Beard gave you a kiss. I don't know if you really wanted that, but that's what you got. <laughs> um, one thing you did want was a Paddy Madden goal, and he got it today. How important could that? Prove to be. Yeah, hopefully it's a, it's a good catalyst for him. And um, you know, he hit the post at Maidenhead the other week, and he's, he's he's been so close, but so far, and 
in some respects for him. I've been really frustrated for his behalf because again, I see the work rate, I see the daily training effort, I see you know him whacking, whacking balls and he's finishing and doing the extras and um, you know you're just desperate for it to turn into success from on the pitch. You know I'm. I'm not here to make life harder for the players. I'm here to make it easier for them. Everyone thinks it's easy stepping over that white line. I can tell you now, it's hard. You know, and you know, it's it's not just a natural thing. You step on and you get glory. You have to really dig in. Being a professional sportsman, professional footballer, it is a real privilege. But it's also a lot comes with it. So when I see the players have their moments today, I can't help be over the moon for them because I know the work that goes into it, and it doesn't always transfer. Um, and so I'm just delighted for them today. I think we're all over the moon for you though as well because I mean the way the fans got on board in that second half, 8,000 of them yeah. screaming your name as well at the mm. final whistle, um, that's the experience you've been waiting for isn't it, through all the Covid times and everything else, yeah. that's what you've been waiting for. Yeah I think look, um, last year I mean I think I come into the club in really difficult circumstances, whatever the decision was around the time it's, it's not really for me to make that call, I've been brought in with a great reputation as a coach, you know, a future manager. Um, Whatever anyone says, the statistics inform me last year, I improved the team, you know, um, and of course I'm going to fight for that on my behalf. We fell short at the end, we know we did, um, and we've, we've had a really difficult moment in the last couple of weeks with injuries and things not going our way. We could quite easily go in 1-0 up at half-time and quite easily beat Grimsby, but yeah. them little moments didn't go for us and it, you know, it turned the screw the other way, so, you know, we... You know, an 18 game on beat and run last year I thought would be the great platform to build upon and as football does it it brings up adverse moments and you've got to get through them adverse moments and I'd like to see today that the people inside this stadium can see how hard as a staff and how hard as players we're trying to get through this moment of adversity and as I said three or four weeks ago you know please stay behind the players and wow they've done that today so from me to them thanks very much and just finally uh, given the injuries you've got as well Eight games in, you're one point off the playoffs. I know you won't get carried away, but it starts to look like not a bad start to the season, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean that's the, that's what I, I get paid to think like a professional, you know, and keep that balance and keep things in the middle. Um, and uh, yeah, look, I, I, I never felt we were a million miles away. And I need to be honest and say that, you know, if anyone thinks I'm saying we've played well in these games we've lost, I'm not, you know. But I'm saying that the margins can dictate performance sometimes. Yeah. And um, you know what we need is what I know as a fact is, you know. 11 confidence players on the pitch is better than and not 11 confident players and you always need to manage that environment as best you can so with that hopefully that can be the catalyst today for that um, that confidence that it can give them you know I spoke about the within that run last year the four the five nil win away at Solihull in an empty stadium the three and four nil wins here brilliant football and there was no one here you know and that, you know that's sort of gut wrenching for me. You know, and, and to get that today and get the win, just see the fans enjoy it. You know, that's what it's all about for me, and that's what I'm here to do. Enjoy your Saturday night. Well done. Cheers, John.